Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a fun one layer card for you today. And I'm actually going to show you an option because um, you may like it better or you may make a mistake, and this is a great fix. So, what we're going to do today is some basic stamping with our peg stamps. This video is brought to you by Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com and use the coupon code LINDSAY17 to save 20% on your peg stamp order. So, I've got a few here. You can use whatever stamps you like. And um, I also decided to use some foiling on this project. Uh, the pretty script there, the word friendship, is also an unmounted stamp from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. And I really like this because I don't like my handwriting, but I love the look of a handwritten sentiment. We're also going to use some um, foil. And uh, you could probably use gold leaf too, especially if you're just doing stripes. But I think that when you get into real detail, you're a little better off having a transfer foil. This is a kind of foil that people typically use on laminators, um, but it also works really well with a glue pen. And these are also available from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. They're a couple bucks and they are fantastic for putting foil down. They're probably my favorite because you could write with them. If you have good handwriting, you can just go ahead and use your handwriting. You can draw with them. Um, but when the glue dries, it's sticky. So it'll stick, it'll the, grab the foil really well. So it's a really fun technique. Um, as for foil, you can use any um, heat set foil or adhesive set foil you have. There are many different brands out there. This mink stuff isn't very expensive. I think regular price, a roll of it is five dollars. Um, and I think I'm gonna actually use maybe a different color. I went a little crazy when like the whole foiling, foiling trend was being popular last year and I bought a bunch of different <laughs> colors. Um, and I've even had some like kids crafts kits that had some like sheets of it. So you might even have some of this around in your stash if you've been crafting for a long time. Oh, I see a roll of gold, gold right here. I actually saw some on sale once, so I just went nuts and bought a bunch of rolls at two fifty dollars a roll. But yeah, that was back old Lindsay, which used to like stock up whenever anything went on sale. <laughs> I'm trying to be so much better. So the other option I wanted to show you is that if you're making this card and you make a mistake in the little area here, you could also take a piece of like black card stock and stamp on it and make a black band to go on your card or any other color that you like. But I honestly think I really just liked it better on the plain card, but I just wanted to show you that option. So the first thing you're going to do is grab a card. Of course, you can work whatever size you're going to work. I'm just working a half a sheet of cardstock. So kind of is like a, an invitation size or an A2 size card. And then I'm going to just simply grab a piece of um, painter's tape and you can use the same piece over and over again. I'm going to do that and I'm going to tape that right down and this is going to mask off the area where I'm going to be stamping the friendship in a little bit. Now just be careful if you are reusing your tape like I am that you do not um, get ink all over your fingers when you go to press it down. So I'm just going to use a little bit of a tissue here and if a little gets smudged on there it's all right because we're going to stamp over that. Um, or just use a fresh piece of tape each time that's up to you. So you just want to kind of get that pretty well horizontal there. I'm going to use four, four colors of ink. I'm going to use um, kind of like I'm going to use uh, peeled paint, fossilized amber, and worn lipstick. It doesn't matter if you use um, uh, these distress oxides or if you use just a regular uh, pigment ink. I'm also using ice spruce, which is kind of a gray. Um, it doesn't matter when you're stamping on the white card what kind of ink you use because they're all going to show up. Uh, so I'm going to start off with my leaf, and this is from Azalea Terrace. And I'm just going to stamp it on a few times. I'm going to turn my stamp a little each time I do it so that um, I get a nice random natural look. You could even use a couple different shades of green if you wanted to. It's up to you. I'm trying to keep it simple though. Don't worry if it's not perfect. And um, I think maybe do another one right there. Now something that you can do is actually use that ink, kind of blend it off the tape onto the white cardstock, give it a little bit of extra uh, grounding there. That can look kind of pretty too. Okay, and now there's this pretty petunia stamp. This is from uh, Bright New Day, and I just like it because it fills in a lot of space. So I can do one there and kind of have it off the edge. I can turn it and do it up here. I can put it in over there. Now the Distress Oxides are a little more opaque, so if you do overlap them a little bit, they will still show up. So that's kind of a nice thing, but that's an effect you're going to get with um, whatever pigment ink you like. So you can, you know, really use whatever pigment ink you care for. And then I've got this little cluster of roses. This is from Delicate Rose, but I really urge you, if you have a good selection already, look at what you have and um, 
and you know just remember you want a variety of sizes so you want like something big like your leaves you want something a little bit smaller like um, you know your flowers you just want to have different sized objects so that when you're filling in it's gonna look nice so I just cleaned that off I want to do some yellow flowers too now I do like that the colors there aren't that there's only 12 of the distress oxide colors right now so they do tend to go together pretty well so it does make it a little easier when you're just trying to lay everything out but it, it doesn't matter really what you use. So now I'm going to put in this little um, kind of filler sprig. This is from Summer Daisy, Sunny Daisy rather. I write all the names on the side of my peg stamps because I, I like to store them all together. I don't like to have them in their packages. Um, I put them in a big just uh, drawer basically standing up on their, um, on their end so I can see what I have. You can also overlap, have some of these a little bit lower. I'm stamping more on this one than I did on the other one. So well, you get to see, you know, whatever kind you like better. Now something else I want to do is actually give it a little bit of um, speckling in there. I want it to have kind of an artistic look. So what I did was I just pressed these ink pads onto a stamping block and then added a little bit of water with a paintbrush here. And I'm just going to flick some on there. You could do that with any of the colors you've used so far. Clean my brush, do the green. You want to make sure that you don't have your like computer in front of you while you're doing this or you're going to have to like clean the screen. Okay. And then um, what I like to do next, sometimes you can just blot a little bit off. You don't want to take away all the ink though. So just blot it if you want it a little bit lighter. Then you just want to dry this. Um, so go ahead and do that and then um, we'll be back for the next step. Okay, once it's all dry, you're going to remove the painter's tape. Okay, and then what you're going to grab is some uh, thin tape, if you have it, some thin double-sided tape. I'm using score tape, and score tape is um, just a really great tape that you can tear. So I really like that because it just makes it easier. If you have like a little tape runner, you can use the same thing, doesn't matter. So I'm just tearing off a piece, and I'm just going to lay it down right over the edge of where I was stamping, and I actually put a little extra on there so I can pull it off to the edge and help hold my card still for my next layer where I'll be stamping. And I'm going to need another piece for the top. Now if you had um, a real raggedy edge you could go right over the entire edge there and make it nice and smooth. Alright, hopefully I have that pretty straight. I can't put my head over it or it will be in your way. <laughs> but I think I've got that pretty straight. And then I'm going to take any sort of script stamp or if you have good handwriting you can just go ahead and write your uh, words and I'm just stamping it here right in the middle again I'm gonna shoot for putting it on straight but if I have it a little crooked please excuse me because I can't stick my head over this or you won't be able to see what I'm doing okay oh, that's not too bad now the reason I had originally decided to use the distress oxides today is because I was intending on doing this portion on black and the distress oxides would show up on black enough for me to write over it with my glue pen. Um, I wanted to play also with the distress oxides on black just to see if that was maybe a new way to use it that looked great because I'm pretty sure I've seen other people do it and it looked great. However, and I only played with it for a few minutes. Um, this was just stamping on, I, I didn't really like the stamping on black. I stamped this on black and sprayed it and it just all, it all looks kind of chalky and gray with just a hint of color. Um, so here I just stamped the same color and like the, uh, the Spice Marmalade uh, ink, I did it the same thing twice and I sprayed one and it almost went white and I don't see hardly, and that, as it dries it just gets darker um, and kind of more faded away. And then I did a background and this is just two layers, but it just looks very chalky to me. Um, it wasn't my cup of tea, but I might play with it some more and see if I can kind of figure something else out because I'm sure there's a great way to use it on black. I just haven't come across that yet, but I just wanted to let you know because I had mentioned that I was going to do that. Okay, so to make our um, word here so that the foil will, adhe will adhere to it, we want to use um, a glue pen, and this is Quickie Glue. I really like it. It's also really good um, to accent um, portions of a like a stamp design. So if you've done like a landscape and maybe you have water or um, something that would be shimmery, just hitting like here and there with the glue pen and then just sprinkling on some microfine clear glitter is such a beautiful effect. So that's actually what I bought it for because I'd seen that effect at a stamp show and I thought it was so pretty. And um, then I realized it works really well for foil. 
So I'm just trying to stay on the lines because if I don't, when I foil it, it is going to, I'm going to see the ink and I want to avoid seeing the ink if I can. Now, I, I also want to maybe put a little flourish on the end. I like that. Oops, I didn't line it up very well. Take your time. Go slow with this pen because you want to make sure it's letting out ink. So I actually um, put a little flower. I stamped this flower down and then I colored it in with my uh, with my glue pen and then I, I uh, foiled it and I'll show you that on the white but this time I think I just want it just the the uh, word but there you can see it like that I just love that gold I think I mean the shimmer what do you call it mirror reflective I really love the look of that um, so the thing is you need to do now is let it dry right now it's kind of blue when it goes clear it's dry so I am actually going to speed this along with my heat tool it doesn't hurt it to do that and it's going to stay sticky so if you want to you know do this and go have a cup of tea and come back it's still going to be sticky so you don't have to like rush or anything you just want to make sure that it's not blue anymore when you go to add the foil otherwise you could end up smudging it and then um and then if you smudge it the foil is going to stick where you don't want it to stick you're going to have little you're going to have little bits if that does happen you can erase it with an eraser so i found that out on my other card <laughs> so i'm going to move this stuff out of the way because i don't want to get foil on anything else and i'm going to use my gold foil and i want to do this kind of in one fell swoop so what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure i burnish down that adhesive really good so it stays put and then i'm going to peel off the backing but i'm going to leave the uh the tails attached so that it holds it on my paper for me and then i'm just going to unroll so when you get the foil it's rolled up and it's adhered usually with a little sticky dot now a lot of people get confused when they're foiling and they think they need to stick the gold part down but it's the opposite you want to stick you see it's it's kind of silvery on one side and gold on the other you want the gold side up because what what there is is actually like a clear release paper so you want to lay this down and I try to get get it right to the edge so the gold side is up and you can reuse oh I don't think I got oh I shoot I don't think I got it right up to the edge um you can reuse any leftover bits so like the the spaces in between the word friendship I can go and use that again so I really don't throw anything away I just um would keep that more for like not if I want to foil like a solid thing, but I have something like a stencil. Maybe I'm going to put glue through a stencil, let it get tacky, then push my foil on it. I'll use the old foil for that um, because no point wasting it. And then when you peel it up, you have a beautiful design. Now there where I didn't quite, I, I kind of started a little too far down. I'm going to go right there. So anytime you miss something, just kind of reposition your foil, burnish over with your fingernail. And there, you can get that in there. Or if you have a spot skip, you can touch it up with a glue pen and you can um, you can redo it. So see, this is what my foil looks like now. We've got that, well, I don't know if you can see that. Let me flip it over, you'll be able to see it from the back. So you can see where it's taken up that foil. It's, it, it captures detail really well, so it's really pretty. And a little goes a long way. So, you know, if you went crazy like me and bought a whole shoebox full of foil, you'll be set for life. I don't think it goes bad, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> I hope it doesn't because I have so much of it. Um, but there, we've got this. You probably don't want to burnish too hard. I think I went a little over it too hard with my fingernail. And that's why it's not so shiny there. But um, so for the ends, what I do is I just tear off because this is score tape and you can tear it because I tried cutting it before and it just uh, it gummed up my scissors. It wouldn't cut very well because of that adhesive. So I was a little crooked with my with my lines, but not too bad. But I think it's just a really uh, elegant look. Now, again, if you want to do this part on black, maybe you made a mistake and you're like, oh, shoot, I messed it up. I messed up my foiling or I smudged some ink on there. Then you could take a strip of another color of paper and you can do the same technique on that strip and you could just glue it down on top and there you have another look. I think this would be really pretty, like with the, if you did the black strip, it would look really nice on like a wedding card um, just because you could do that black and white elegance like you could do, um, you know, whatever colors they have in their bridal party for the stamping and then you could do like a strip of black um, or gray. I think it's just really pretty and I think I did totally when I went over it with my fingernail. I guess I wouldn't recommend burnishing it now that I, I see that. I think you just want to lay it down and, and gently press over it because I I think I did kind of kind of get that a little bit let's see if we can get it shiny I think I did mess it up a little bit there because it's not as shiny as it should be but 
But there you have it. There's a technique. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're looking for the stamps or the quickie glue pen, check out, or the inks, check out our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. I will link up the products that I use and I'll put that coupon code in the video description so you can save 10%, uh, 20%, goodness, 20% on your peg stamp order. And these are so fun and versatile. The thing I really like about these is that they're, they're compact. You can have a couple mini ink pads, a set of these little stamps, and you can make a batch of cards. You don't have to pull out everything but the kitchen sink to make something beautiful. And I think that's really important, especially as people are getting into a hobby, or maybe they just don't have all the room for tons and tons of big stamps. Like you can do so much with these little stamps and uh, they're a lot of fun to play with. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. Till next time, happy crafting.